I offer my life, God, for I know that you love me dearly and faithfully. I offer my life to you. Teach me your paths. Let us join together in our call to worship. The responses are printed online and in the bulletin. The path lies before us. Let us set our feet upon the path. In the distance, we hear a cheering crowd. Beyond, we see the dark shadow of the cross. Grant us courage, O God. Send your spirit to walk beside us. Our soloist today is Chris Donlevy, and he will lead us in singing more voices, 135, called by Earth and Sky, verses 1 and 2. Welcome to all who are joining us today for worship, whether you're online Sunday morning at 10.30, whether you are here later in the week, or whether you're here today with us. All of the responses are printed online or in the bulletin. Thanks, Chris, for sharing your gift of voice with us today. And Rita, who's a participant of the leadership program with the United Church Licensed Lay Leadership Program, thank you for being a part of this service today. Thanks to all who participate in worship today, Tyler at the soundboard, Michael and Charlotte recording, and Wes on the piano and organ. A special thank you to everyone who donated to the annual Snow Night event, Safe Night Off the Streets of Winnipeg, for women in the sex trade. Special bags for them were made up of donations from everyone and were given to the women as gathering was not possible this year due to COVID. And if there's a special birthday or anniversary, or someone you know is having one, please let us know so that we as a faith community can celebrate together. Martha Graham is having her 65th birthday on March 1st, and Greg Fern will be celebrating his 70th birthday on February 26th. Happy birthday to them both. Our AGM is coming up next Sunday at 11.30 a.m. It will be done online. So join us for the Zoom AGM, our very first one in the history of St. Andrews. Please sign up by calling the office or referring to the eBlast. Today we celebrate the Sacrament of Communion. Please bring your elements if you wish to participate in that part of the service. Let us celebrate together. We remember as we celebrate God's presence in worship that St. Andrews River Heights United Church gathers on Treaty One land and that this land on which we gather to live, work, and worship is the traditional territory of the Anishinaabe Cree, Ojibwe Cree, Dakota, and Denny peoples, and the homeland of the Métis peoples 
who were here before us, those that live with us now and the generation to come. As treaty people, we seek to live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship with all our relations. We also strive to be responsible stewards of the land and respect the cultures, ceremonies, and traditions of all who call it home. As we open our hearts and minds to the past, we commit ourselves to working in a spirit of truth and reconciliation to make a better future for all. Chris will now lead us in singing verses 3 and 4 of More Voices 135, called by Earth and Sky. says, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants. God never leaves us. We are feeling defeated. God never leaves us. When we are in the depths of loss, God never leaves us. When hope seems an impossible dream, God never leaves us. And at this time of Lenten reflection, God is present with us. We lit the peace candle before the service began, remembering the peace that is so needed in our lives and in our world today. We light the Christ candle, remembering that Christ is our light, the good news of the gospel. We light the rainbow candle, recognizing our call to be a light in our world. Before the service, we lit the purple candle, symbolizing our journey together for our Lenten season. Through Advent, which is a season of ever-increasing light, anticipating the incarnation of Christ, we lit candles. Through Lent, which is a season of ever-decreasing light, approaching Christ's crucifixion, a candle is extinguished to symbolize the journey through wilderness and toward the cross and tomb. Today, as we lit the Christ candle to remind ourselves of a with us God, we also extinguish one Lenten candle to remind us of the sacrifice God made for the love of us. As we do this, we bring to mind the color red and all images it evokes to, for us. Red, the color of anger and blood, sunrise and sunset, high heels and sick, silk ribbons. Red is the color of ever-giving light, fire. Red is the Holy Spirit. One candle is lit, 
one is extinguished. Now it's time for our special children's time. And I want to ask you kids, what's your favorite color? Is it red? Is it yellow? Is it pink? Is it orange? Is it green? Is it purple? Now if you look around the sanctuary, and you can see a bit or remember from your memory, there's a lot of the color purple. There's purple on the communion table. There's two cloths there that are purple. I'm wearing a purple stole. I even have, believe it or not, purple socks. See? I have purple socks on. There's lots of purple. My, my tie is purple. Purple is a color for Lent. It's a color of royalty. And in the Lenten season, we talk about Jesus, our King, and we think about Jesus, and we hear references of Jesus as the King. So as you think about the color purple, you can realize that at Lenten, in the Lenten season, we are truly a purple people. Our scripture reading this morning is for Genesis chapter 9, verses 8 through 17. This is God's covenant with Noah. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth. I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be cut off by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you a covenant for all generations to come. I have set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and their rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. So God said to Noah, this is a sign of the covenant I have established between me and all the life on earth. 
These are the words of the Lord. Praise be to God. Chris will lead us in singing Voices United 449, verses 1 and 2. Let us pray. God, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts will be acceptable in your sight. Amen. Now, I want to ask if anybody this week ate a lot of donuts, or if on Tuesday you had pancakes and sausages. Did you pig out on those pancakes? Because traditionally, that's what you do, or you watch the Mardi Gras, or you're involved in something. This year it's different because of COVID. But maybe you saw a virtual Mardi Gras on TV. Maybe you went ahead and had your pancakes and your sausages at home because you fatten up before the fast of Lent begins. Because the next day is Ash Wednesday. And then we begin our journey of Lent. Now, for some, some really like Lent. It's a time of contemplation, reflection, and thinking. Now, I'm kind of an Easter person. I like the whoopla and the big celebration. So I always anticipate Easter. But over the years, I've grown used to the season of Lent and grown to love it because it gives me an opportunity to think about my own journey of faith, my own relationship with God. And so this season of Lent, we are going to talk about covenants. And all of us have signed covenants. Maybe you um, bought a house and you signed a mortgage. That's a covenant. You get married, you sign a marriage license. That's a covenant, a promise. You buy a new car, you sign the papers for that. We all have signed on the dotted line. We all have made covenants. And we've all made promises. And a promise is a promise. And God makes promises, and in these covenants, promises with people to do something. And in the story we read today, God promises never again will there be another flood. And with that comes a symbol. And a young minister was trying to explain to the children in, in his congregation what vestments were, and he was talking about the symbols of church. And he very innocently said to the children, why do I wear a collar? And some ministers do that. And this little, one, little boy shot up his arm and he said, you wear a collar because it protects you against fleas and ticks for five months. And the minister really had difficulty in continuing on at that moment because that wasn't quite the symbol that he had in mind. Today, there's a symbol of a rainbow at the story of Noah and the ark. But before that, there's a promise. God makes a promise. And I want to tell you a story about a little indigenous girl whose name is Alusha. Now, Alusha is featured in a book called A Promise is a Promise. And in this book, she decides that she wants to go fishing. And there's nothing wrong with that. She loves fishing. And she's very good at it. And so her mom says to her, you can go fishing, but only go to the lake because it's close to home. And the story was that if you go to the sea, there's cracks in the sea and the sea creatures might capture you. And so she promised her mom that she would go to the lake and she wouldn't go to the sea. So she went to the lake to fish, but couldn't catch anything. And she thought to herself, you know, 
My mom says Santa Claus exists. My mom says the Tooth Fairy exists, and I'm not sure I really believe that. So I'm going to go to the sea because I don't really think that there are, truly are sea creatures. So off she goes. She walks onto the ice very carefully because she's looking for those cracks, just in case her mom is right. And so she walks along, and all of a sudden she's fishing, and she says to herself very proudly. I have caught lots of fish. I am really, really good at this. And so, all of a sudden, she hears a voice. You're not a very smart person to be fishing on my sea, for you will fall through the cracks, and the sea creatures will capture you. And they grab her and take her down underneath in the ice. She's very scared, and at that point, she wishes she had listened to her mom. And so the sea creatures tell her that if she brings other children, she'll be saved. So she says, "I'll bring my brothers and sisters," and she makes that promise. And they say to her, "A promise is a promise. You must not break that promise." So she's relieved. She lands up on top of the ice and goes home. And she's almost frozen. Her dad catches her at the back step, brings her in, and warms her up because she's pretty frozen. Then she tells them what she's done, and her mother says, "A promise is a promise." But she said, "I have a way around it." So she says to her, "Bring the sea creatures here. We'll go down and get them. Tell them to come up for a feast, and then we will send the children down." And so that's what they did. The sea creatures came up. And they feasted with the family. They had bread, and they loved it. They had candy, and they loved it. Meanwhile, Alusha had snuck back down to the sea. And had called for the sea creatures, who she knew wasn't there. And when the sea creatures came, she said, "A promise is a promise. I kept my promise, but you were not here. So you must save me, and you must save my brothers and sisters. A promise is a promise. What promises do we make, and do we keep our promises? Now God promised the people in Noah's day that after the flood, that God would never ever." Destroy the land again. A promise is a promise. God promised that that would never happen again, and yet we see in our environment we promise to take care of the creation that God has given us, and yet we see how the glaciers are breaking away in the north, and how the polar bears are struggling to survive. We know that our environment is in grave danger. And yet we might say, "Well, it's COVID. We we really can't be bothered with that. We weren't really bothered with it before COVID happened." And yet we promised to take care of the environment that God has given us. A promise is a promise. God kept God's promise to the people. To this day, a flood has never destroyed the whole earth, and we too are people of promise and a covenant of promise that we are to keep. A promise is a promise. For the love of the world, Jesus offered everything he had, even life itself. In response to this powerful gift of love, let us offer our gifts and our lives to God, as we share in our offering. Our offering can be mailed to the church or dropped off in the mailbox at the door. Chris will lead us in the offertory. Oh. 
As we prepare for the sacrament of communion, bring your elements and participate with us. May God be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to God. Let us give thanks to God most holy. It is right to give God thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of light, giver of all life, source of love. From the dust of the earth, you created us in your image. From the bondage and slavery, you delivered us. Through all the wilderness wanderings, you guided us. You call us to renewal and repentance, to justice and compassion, to healing and to wholeness. We thank you for sending us, Jesus, your chosen one, bread for the journey. He lived and loved this human life, taking upon himself our suffering and our sorrow, being tested as we are tested, and reaching out to broken victims of the world's brokenness. In him we come to know your truth, to feel the life that is Christ within us, so that it is throughout these Lenten days and nights we worship you and bless your name. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. In his last hours among <clears throat> us, Jesus and his friends gathered together in an upper room. During supper, he took some bread, saying, Blessed is the Holy One of Israel, sovereign of all that is, who brings forth bread from the earth. After blessing the bread, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take this and eat it. This is my body. At the end of the meal, he took the cup, saying, Blessed is the Holy One of Israel, sovereign of all that is, who creates the fruit of the vine. Having offered thanks, Jesus gave the cup to them and said, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for the many for the forgiveness of sins. Eternal God, we unite in this covenant of faith as we break bread and share the cup, giving thanks for your love in Jesus the Christ. We spread your table with these gifts of the earth and of our labor. We present to you our very lives committed to your service on behalf of all people. But what we do here, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. As we remember the death and resurrection of Jesus, we also remember all with whom you would have us share your feast. We pray for all who are in sorrow or in pain, all who are ill, or alone, all who are in seniors' residences and nursing homes, all who grieve. We remember Kim and Maxine Hammond in the loss of Kim's mother. All who live with fear, oppression, or hunger, all who live with childhood trauma, abandonment, and abuse. We pray for the church and its varied ministries for nations as they strive for peace and justice, for all our family and friends. With the words Jesus taught us, we now pray to God. Our Mother and our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Send, O God, your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who share in this bread and cup may be the body of Christ, light, life, and love in the world. Through Christ, with Christ, in Christ, and in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, 
God most holy, now and forever. Amen, amen, amen. The bread of life. The cup of communion. The gifts of God for the people of God. Let us partake together the bread of life. Let us partake together of the cup of everlasting life. Let us pray together the prayer printed online and in the bulletin. Life-giving life God, we, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence. presence. In the in simplicity and splendor of this holy meal, Unite us with all who are fed by the life of Christ, that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love, and that your church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Beloved of God, go to your neighbor in peace. Go into the wilderness where God sends you. Go in the knowledge that when you encounter trials and temptations, God will care for you. Go in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. <clears throat>